We've uh, spoken to the inspirational Kirsty McPherson pre previously on Chaos TV ahead of her epic 50 mile ride across Dartmoor in aid of the Cornwall Air Ambulance. If that adventure doesn't seem challenging enough, Kirsty told us about her medical conditions and how she suffers f frequent dislocations, twisting limbs and periods of blindness and paralysis. I'm very pleased to say she's back with us now and joining us now to update us on her fundraising efforts. Kirsty. It's amazing to have you back on air. Hello. Hello. How are you two? <laughs> Very good, yeah, thank you. Good. Um, I love the fact that you've come back again to talk to us about things. How have things been? How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And talking of pets, if you hear snoring in the background, it is my dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nothing am, like a summer nap. I'm envious. I mean, in this heat, do you blame? Do you blame? It's him or her? Him. We him. have three, but it's just him that's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> typical. Typical. Hey, what are you, what are you yeah, suggesting? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kirsty, obviously fantastic to have you back with us on Chaos TV. First off, we're all dying to know how you've been getting on. Um, have you managed to complete your challenge? We completed 51 miles at 2.15 on Monday. Wow. Lovely. Congratulations. Humongous congratulations. Massive achievement. Um, Thank I can you. I still remember... Obviously, you've talked to us about this previously. Now, I believe you've done something similar. If I remember correctly, you've done something similar before, haven't you? I did a 13-mile sponsored ride for Chiverton RDA to buy a defibrillator in 2016. Now, if that wasn't enough, correct me if I'm wrong, you had a very serious injury near the very start of that one? At nine miles in, I dislocated both kneecaps and finished the ride so that we could get a defibrillator with two dislocated kneecaps. Just, I mean, what do you say to that? Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. So, obviously, for people who haven't seen obviously our previous interviews, I thought it'd be nice just to give an idea to not only what you go through, just a very sneak peek, obviously, but also your resilience, um, which I've always loved since the moment I've heard about you and all of this. And I, I can never get over this fact. I've talked to other people now in, in my personal life about you because I think you're such an inspiration. Could you tell us more about this journey now and what happened along the way? Okay, so day one, um, Vicky... This wasn't just my challenge, because obviously I went with a support crew. So I had Vicky Bartlett, lovely Vicky Bartlett, who's a, a pro endurance rider. Um, she planned the ride for me and has been there from the start. Um, she led the way, planned the routes. Uh, we stayed at Vicky's in the lorry, um, and she, she looked after us really well. And then um, Emily, um, who rides with me, uh, because I have to have someone ride with me whenever I ride due to my disability. Um, I pay Emily to ride with me a couple of times a week. And Emily said, I'll come with you and be an extra safety rider. So Emily came with us as well as an extra safety rider. Um, so day one, uh, several miles into the journey, um, Vicky's Dartmoor pony lost a shoe. So um, we managed to get hold of Vicky's wonderful farrier who um, agreed to meet us in uh, Widdicombe um, on his part day off. And he came, she had to walk two and a bit miles leading her pony. And he met us in Widdicombe to put a shoe on her pony uh, oh, so we could nice. continue on. Um, I think we were at about mile 15 when my kneecap dislocated oh, on my left again. leg. Um, I got to mile 15, so I did better than that. I was about to say nearly double, isn't it? Uh, but you yeah. still, still had like, what, 35 miles to go? Yeah, but hey, 15 miles wasn't <laughs> bad considering it's nine miles last time. So I rode on for a mile and a half with my kneecap dislocated. Um, but at this point, I I was in absolute agony and I couldn't keep going. So we phoned for Gary, which is Vicky's wonderful husband, who was our ground support team with, with Ruby and Alfred, her amazing children. I will say Alfred is only four and Ruby is eight and they are wonderful children. And they drove across Dartmoor with a Land Rover to meet us because they... Vicky's got an app on her phone that pinpoints us at all times. Perfect. So they drove to meet us. Um, Gary helped me off Mimosa. I relocated my kneecap whilst oh. fighting down on my camel pack tubing, which is what we were drinking out of. We carry a water pack on our back. So the tubing of my um, camel pack I bit down on because I could have screamed. And as it crunched back into position, um, I literally could have screamed. So... Oh. Um, I then had to rock tape my knee into place to make sure it stayed in place. 
And then Gary got me back on my most by standing on the back of his Land Rover. Of course, perfect um, <laughs> use of a Land Rover. <laughs> well, yeah, we just put the tailgate down. He had me on the top of the tailgate, and then I climbed back on my laser. And then we finished, I think we had 19 miles the first day. So that was day one. <laughs> I mean, that's... Oh. Yeah, sorry. Um, the, the knee crunching, I'm, I won't lie, we are both cringing here. Like, there's no yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, a little bit squeamish. Just a, yeah. Um, sorry, do go on. We're, we're still with you. We're still awake and we haven't so, fainted yet. <laughs> so day one was eight and a half hours in the saddle, which was quite a long day. Yeah. Um, we Day what, day two, um, I woke up um, with very blurred vision. Uh, knowing things were going a bit peak Tom, Um I took a migraine shot because I knew what was coming. It was silent migraine. Yeah. I had no headache. Um, didn't know which way this was going to go. Um, my sight blew in my right eye. Um, I, I maintained vision then in my left eye. So I had complete vision in my left eye, nothing in my right. Um, I cut off all my arm. I don't think if, don't know if you can see my arm. Oh, blimey. You can see a little bit there, yeah. Yeah, it's better than it was, um, but I couldn't see anything out my right side, so I got battered by brambles, hedgerows, bushes. Um, it looked a lot worse than it is now, because um, I couldn't see anything out my right side. So Emily had to stay on as, as much as she could to my right-hand side um, to, to make sure uh, that she would, could tell me what was there, anything that was worrying, anything that could potentially make um, the horse spook. Um, but to be fair, Mimi was an absolute bomb-proof angel the whole few days. She was great. Um, you, but just mentioned... anything that could potentially cause us problems, like overhanging trees, they had to warn me because I couldn't see them. Yeah. You've mentioned yeah. Mimi before. Obviously, we, we'll talk, probably talk about her a bit later, but it's lovely to hear that she's yeah. still absolutely fantastic with you. Yeah. Then we went out to dinner because each night we went out for a meal and we went out to dinner um, that night. Again, I still didn't have my vision um, went for a, a quick wee break and um, ended up walking into the toilet door and ending up with a bruise down my face because I couldn't see it. I hadn't opened the door quite far enough. Went to walk out and walk straight into the door. You'll have to excuse me couldn't giggling, but I suppose it's one of those sort of knee-jerk things. It isn't is. That kind I of thing. came back and I was <laughs> practically crying laughing because it was oh. just one of those things. I thought I did so well getting through the day and to finish the day, to walk into the door... <laughs> In the toilet. That, <laughs> that sounds like me. It's you do something that is actually fairly kind of dangerous, absolutely fine. And then the moment you get home, you break your toe <laughs> by stubbing yeah, it on a doorway. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, blimey. Yeah, okay. Right, you, know, you survived the dangerous bit, but yeah, the most <laughs> stupid thing, you go and do that. So it was just, you didn't know whether to laugh or cry at that minute, you know? Yeah. So that, that was day two. Um, day three, um, I woke up, I, I had the migraine in the middle of the night, that bit the headache hit in the middle of the night. So Ooh. I woke up feeling really rotten, the headache hit, took another migraine shot. Um, I thought I needed to get, we got up, we were getting up at five o'clock every morning. We were riding out wow. at six o'clock in the morning to try and beat the heat. The temperatures were hitting 27 degrees centigrade. Oh. Um, day two, we were in the saddle six and a half hours, I think, um, in that sort of heat. So day three... Um, we went out a tiny bit later because um, we had a slightly few uh, less hours to go. I think we did we did second day. It's 17 miles second day. I think it was 17 miles second day. Um, I think it was. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. But yeah, no, I think it was because we did 14 miles on the last day. So I'm not quite sure how many miles that worked out. Um, but yeah, we... Um, the third day, I woke up then, and I was still my my balance was a bit off. I still felt a bit wonky, so I thought I'd take another migraine shot because I knew it was going to hit if I didn't. So we got on Mimi, and I was still feeling a bit unbalanced. The ladies helped me tack up the horse and everything. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, as we we're going down the road, the migraine medication was making me really sick, and we're going down the road, and I was retching all the way down the road. I was riding down the road, all down the road. Oh, blimey. And my um, <laughs> lovely fellow rider, Emily, was like, oh, I don't like people being sick. <laughs> I was like, I can't really help this. <laughs> all right, down the road. <laughs> just, 
So it was it was the most comical thing, and you're trying not to be <laughs> sick, and you're trying not to laugh as you're trying not to be sick. And you've got this person with you who doesn't like people being sick, and it's just like, oh my goodness, it's just like you don't have to laugh at her or trying not to be oh, sick, bless. and it was really hard. <laughs> So it was it was comical. It was you know, we were all very sore. We've got it was like a it was like one of those Englishmen, Irishmen, Scotchmen walk into a pub. We had a show <laughs> for a paradressage rider and a pro endurance rider trail ride across Dartmoor. So, you know <laughs> We all had sore legs bar obviously Vicky, who's the endurance rider. Um because Emily's a show jumper, so she's not used to long distance riding. There's me that's done a few longer distance but not this length of time my ls down loss means my skin's fragile i've got cuts in my inner thighs because my skin's fragile so you know every time um every time that vicky who's the power ride um power ride no, she's not she's an <laughs> endurance rider it's like shall we just trot here and i'm like thinking my head's thinking yeah, that's great. That'll kill some time. And my bottom's thinking, no, please, no more. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really can't do this. <laughs> and, but we had some lovely canters and we had some lovely gallops. We had our first proper gallop and it really got that bit that for so long, it's just been because of my disability is holding back onto the speed freak that I used to have because of my <laughs> disability. And that bit of me was released and I got that adrenaline back that I'd, I'd missed so much. Oh, that's lovely. Um, so it was it was an amazing experience, and the pain was far less. Uh, do you know what I mean? That the enjoyment was so more more than the pain, if that makes sense to you. The memories I yeah. took away far outweighed all all of that. Completely understand what you mean. Yeah. Um, so you've actually mentioned a little bit there uh, about obviously your. Uh, well, one of your disabilities, obviously, you have a few. Um, you've got a couple that we've mentioned before is your Ellis Danlos syndrome, and I think it's yeah. uh, generalized dystonia. Uh, for those yeah. who are maybe unsure what those may be, could you give a bit more of a, uh, information about what those are? Okay, my Ellis Danlos means that my my limbs can dislocate um, spontaneously, um, hence my kneecap popping. Um, <sighs> It also means that I have fragile skin, hence that I ended up with with cuts. Um, then I have um, generalized dystonia, which makes my muscles spasm and makes my limbs twist. And then I have hemiplegic migraine, which can make me go blind or paralyzed when I have um, a migraine. Um, you mentioned about the generalized dystonia. Um, that does seem to affect my my nervous system. Does seem to be affecting my internal organs. And I mentioned previously in one of your shows it was affecting my bladder. Now yeah. on day uh, day three, yeah, day three, that did seem to be affecting my bladder quite a bit because about every half an hour I was having to pop off for a wee. So Mimi's quite a big girl, so that, that did kind of um, cause a, a few problems. So it, it was a case of. Um, finding hedges and trying to clamber up hedges um on day two um that was quite a comical and i was hoping because i i don't know if any of you have followed me on my um wonky zebra and the beautiful giraffe facebook blog um but i kind of was taking the pee a little out of emily it's just a bit of banter um <laughs> you know it, it's friendly banter and you know emily could have got her own back on me absolutely loads um, especially on one occasion when we had to go for a comfort break and being rather wobbly because I didn't have my sticks. It was kind of, um, and one sight, one I'd sighted, I had to clamber behind a log and under some ferns and to try and get out. It was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I was kind of crawling, trying to get out of the undergrowth, grabbing hold of whatever I could because I couldn't see anything and looking completely paralytic. So um, <laughs> it was she really could have got her own back on me on so many occasions. She's just too nice. <laughs> did, did, did it look like you'd just been on a night out and you'd had one too many? I think I'd been two sheets through the wind, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, but she's just, she had a GoPro as well, so she really could have got her own back. <laughs> oh, you got real lucky with that one, clearly. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, obviously, this is a, a massive a massive challenge you undertook um i believe you did it for the air ambulance why did you take on such a challenge and why the air ambulance in particular i took on such a challenge because i know um 
I know what my disability means um, in re regards to how much it affects me. And I thought that it's a good way um, of raising money because other people will see what a challenge it is for me, especially my friends um, and the para community. And I hope that it would help raise money. Um, the Cornwall Air Ambulance are amazing. They do so much in Cornwall, the Alpha City. Um, they transport patients between Cornwall and all over the country. And when any local county need them, they'll they'll pick up from there as well. You know, so they they will go above and beyond to help other local counties as well. It's not just our own. Um, they are always there for traffic accidents. They're always there to transport between um, uh, hospitals when needed. Um, they were there for my friend's children when they needed to be transported from Trelisk, um up to Derrisford and to Bristol Hospital. And they were outside Trelisk when. I may have needed them when I went into well, they thought I was going into premature labour with my twins. Luckily, I didn't need them, but I knew they were there. But I've had friends who've children been in car crashes. I've had friends who've needed to go to Derrisford who've suffered brain injuries, um, and I'm ever so thankful that they've been there for them and that these children and my friends are still here. And if they wasn't for them, they wouldn't be. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I must admit, I've had one interaction, I think, myself with the air ambulance, and I couldn't thank them enough. Um, it, sadly, it was when my, my grandfather passed away, but because of where we lived at the time, um, getting an ambulance out, you're still looking at a 20-minute drive at least. Um, sometimes there's just no place to over, overtake traffic. So instead, they just sent the, the air ambulance out. And they were so good and awesome. And I was only like little, but they, bless them, they gave me all the all the time and respect to listen to me and let me guide them through the village to where the house was. And the teams are just absolutely brilliant. And I don't know how they do what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's an absolute brilliant, you know, choice or fundraiser. Now, we've mentioned, obviously, horses a lot. You do a lot with horses. You've got friends in, in, yeah. in the same sort of world. Could you tell us where your love of horses came to be uh, and a bit more a bit more about your life around horses? I was four years old when I first got involved with horses. My mum's friend Millie had a horse called Toby and she first, um, my mum wasn't very well. She had her gallbladder removed. So Millie was looking after me when my dad went to work and she took me up to help her with the horses and sat me on a gate post and I was, was meant to have stayed on the gate post but being a four-year-old typical four-year-old i decided to wander <laughs> off and feed the horse the apple i was given to feed the horse later in the day Aww. so millie came back to find me stood under toby with an apple up in my hand giving it the apple and that was it then she decided that she was going to put me on the horse and put me on a lunch rein and give me a few rides on toby and i fell in love with horses from that day that's absolutely lovely. <laughs> I love that you you given your your treat of an apple. Went now nah, the horse wants it instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was for the horse. To be fair, it was for the horse. But oh, later that day, oh, um, right. you know, I wasn't meant to be in the field with the horses on my own. Yeah, when I you were being supervised. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Now, obviously, fundraising is still very much open for business. Could you tell us a little bit about how yeah. much you've raised, what's going on? I believe we've actually got the website here ready to put on screen as well for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the GoFundMe is currently standing at £2,475. Wow. Um, I have approximately £150 on a, in a tin on my desk. Um, and I think there's a bit more in a collection bucket we've got um, at the weekend. Um, and then we've got an auction running online on Facebook, which is um, the online auction for the Cornwall um, Air Ambulance organised or hosted. I can't quite sure remember which exact word that was by <laughs> WZ, which has something for all the family. And that's running till the 31st of July. Um, now, if there's any small businesses listening um, or big businesses that would like to donate to that, um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, but if anyone listening would like to go on there and bid, then please do. Fantastic, um, guys. Yeah, please, please go along. We've had Kirsty on a lot of times now. And if you haven't already realized it by so watching this, your endurance is amazing and your determination, as well as your positivity in such bleak times. I love how you're just laughing about things like uh, that, that affect you so much, but you can just laugh about well, it. I nearly friends. didn't go. It, the, the, the bit that I haven't told you is I ended up in recess only six days before I went. Oh, that sounds like um, something quite. Um, I was going to say interesting, quite 
um, important to this story. Please tell us about. I'm glad you're okay, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell I us a bit about that. It, I came off Mimi, which wasn't really anyone's fault. Um, Mimi and I went with my friend Claire down to Idlis Woods um, the Saturday before we were due to go. We went off on the Friday, um, but we went up um, on a training session. And um, Mimi decided to go down a track which was a little bit overgrown. And oh. at the point I realised that we can't get down here, I was trying to get Mimi to turn around. And Mimi, being a youngster and a bit hot-headed, um, <laughs> was decided that we can fit if she takes it with speed. <laughs> um, by, by this Sorry. time, um, there was no chance of me turning Mimi around or even manoeuvring myself in any shape to uh, get down the side of her. And I leant back as far as I could. There was no way. She caught the, the branches, caught the bottom of my rib cage. It oh. flung me off backwards at speed. I whacked the back of my head, the top of my neck. Um, I hit the ground and went blind instantly. Oh, wow. um, it took me a few minutes. Um, my friend went after Connie. Um, they think I may have been knocked out because I heard a woman's voice that didn't exist. Um, oh, now, the next thing I know, I got my vision back, but I felt very woozy, um, was staggering around. I clambered up through the undergrowth and a, a man, I heard a man shouting. I said, can you please get my horse? Can you please help me get my horse? Now, luckily, Mimi was wearing our amazing high-vis um, from my sponsor's Safety, and uh, the man easily located Mimi. And because I had blurred vision, she was wearing the high vis. I could see her legs running past me backwards and forwards. I was like, Mimi, I'm here. Stop running around. And she just kept running past me. Um, and I had my high vis on as well. So people could see what had happened. Um, and I thought, I'm not going to go to hospital because I know what's going to happen. They'll tell me I can't go on my ride. So oh. I thought, that's, that's that. Well, the following day, um, my neck was really in spasm my back was really in spasm and i thought right i'm going to ring 111 and ask for a gp appointment to get some anti-spasmodic medication so they're like right well we you know what's going to happen we're going to have to ask you a load of questions now well, i said well i don't want you to because yeah. you'll end up sending me an ambulance and i'm going to say i don't want one so, <laughs> so they said well well you need to get checked out so i i agreed to go to the minor injuries at campbell so I went there and they said, right, with what you've told us, you need to go to Tresk. So can I'm I, like, well, will they give me a prescription if I go to Tresk? Well, can said, well, I interrupt you a minute? Yeah. I, I just want to say, I love how you made this like a business meeting. <laughs> 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 it's like I've possibly injured my neck and spine. No, no. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about my injuries. We'll talk about what needs to be done, and we'll come to an agreement about really what needs to be done. No, no. Sorry, was, go on. But no, it's a, oh, it really was, and I was so adamant. I just want a prescription for Baclofen. So um, I said to them, Could, "Will they give me a prescription if I go to Trisk?" And they're like, "Well, they they might do depending what they 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 find." I'm like, "Okay, well, I'll go to Trisk then." So I went to Trisk and I went into triage and I, um, I said, well, I'm only coming here because they sent me from miners. And the next thing I know, they whizzed a trolley through the door. They put my neck in blocks. They oh, wow. rushed me straight through to resus. They put me through every scanning machine you can possibly imagine, running every test on me. Um, and then they, um, yeah, no, they, they were amazing. I was with them for eight and a half hours in resus. Ooh. They really looked after me. They're an amazing team of people. Um, they they said um, it's possible that I had concussion and possible concussion from the lower part of my spine, um, and just to keep an eye on it. But there was nothing sinister that they could find from any of the the tests they run on me, and I was meant to go back to them um, if I had um, symptoms of nausea um, and headache. So I I um, yeah I just kept quiet for the next two days. <laughs> I was vomiting. <laughs> Flipping heck. I mean, not going to lie, quite an important part of this story, I feel. I mean, mm. that's just, that's just not, I'm really glad you're okay. Obviously, it could have been a lot worse, but um, I like yeah. how they said, come back if you have headaches for someone who has migraines quite often. I mean, that's a little bit of a difficult one to pinpoint, isn't well, it? This is the problem. And they, they say, they said to me to come back if I had any of the symptoms, if I had any, any vomiting. Well, I was vomiting for two days after that, but... They put me full of so much morphine. I couldn't tell you if it was the morphine that was making me sick or if it was the head injury. So I was of like, course. well, 
if that's my only symptom that I'm vomiting, I'm not going back just for that because it could just be the morphine. Oh, blimey. I, I mean, absolutely well done. You make, you, you really do make the best of decisions on a knife point, I will say. But you make them on the knife edge, but you make some really good decisions. Um, I'm going to move back to questions here a little bit. Is there anyone in particular or any groups of people you would like specifically to say thank you to? Firstly, I'd like to say thank you to Vicky Bartlett and Emily Linden. Um, without them, this would not have happened, especially with Vicky and her husband, Gary. Um, Vicky's planned this from the start. She's been absolutely amazing. She planned our routes. Um, so she put us up in a lorry in her fields and the horse to fields. But without her, this would just wouldn't have happened. I couldn't have planned the routes. You know, she she took us out. She she led us each way. She's been there from the start. And she's an absolutely amazing person. Um, thank you to Emily Linden and her mum and dad. Her, mom, her dad drove us up there in the lorry, um, lent us the lorry to sleep in, and Emily for coming up with us you know having that second person was absolutely great um if anything had have happened luckily nothing seems to happened and you know but if it had we had an extra person that could have gone off and got help that was brilliant um to equa safety my sponsor who provide us with high vis because they've saved my bacon literally twice since i've had that high vis kit so wow. thank you to them and to um uh Cornwall, um CFM country stores and to Briggs who have um, provided me with kit for Mimi uh, a massive thank you to them and to everyone that sponsored us and donated to the auction just thank you you've blown me away so many people involved in something like this isn't there um, and talking of your challenge um, you obviously you've had some sort of arrest now I would hope um, knowing what oh, you're no, like oh no I've been back at work since I got home what <laughs> Oh my goodness me, will you take a rest for one day? <laughs> no, no, I was literally, I was working all day yesterday. I've been working since um, this morning. I dropped the kids at school. I went up, did the horses this morning, did some poo picking um, before I took them to school. Came home, been working since I got back before I came online with you. <laughs> you know what? Every time you come on the show, you make me feel about this small for being overweight and complaining about getting up in the morning. Honestly, no, uh, it's cool. crazy. <laughs> but I mean, what is next now? for you um obviously you've done 13 mile 50 mile i dread to ask what you've got planned next something bigger something better we're doing something next year for cornwall and for devon air ambulance and the um everything will be split between the two charities that we we raise now we have vicky emily and hopefully lucy pew um joining us next year um and we are going to be doing something longer um Hopefully, over an extra day, I'm hoping. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. Um, and then that whatever we raise next year will be split between the two charities. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. You're such an inspiration to so many people, Kirsty. And again, it's great to have you coming back on the show, telling us about all your plans, what's been going on. Um, please stay strong, obviously. Um, and guys out there, if you want to donate to Kirsty's GoFundMe page, please head on over to our chaos tv uk across any of our socials and you'll find a link there Kirsty, thank you for coming on the show it's been a pleasure thank you please thank you come back again back. soon no any time please just stay safe <laughs> please stay thank safe you, I will. <laughs> thank you amazing stuff amazing yeah uh, absolutely brilliant um i always love having Kirsty on the show she's uh, she, well she's i've said it many times she's an inspiration um guys like i said go to our social media and have a look at her gofundme page for now we're gonna have a little bit of music and we'll be back with you shortly